Welcome, everybody, and this is Rabbi David Nesinta, Chabad House, Johannesburg, and we are very honored to have with us, very, very honored to have Titi Anwar, a, a former Miss Israel. Titi was born in, in a primitive town in Ethiopia. She made her way to Israel. She became a lieutenant in the IDF and a former Miss Israel. And Titi is going to be interviewed by a very close friend, a radio, a radio and tele television personality, our good friend Ilana Africa is going to take us through. The way it's going to go, Ilana is going to ask Titi a few questions. She'll speak. After this will be Q&A. And please, God, we should all walk away from this being absolutely inspired. Thank you. Ilana, off to you. Thank you so much, Rabbi. And I must say, what an honor for me to be part of this broadcast today. Leading up to today, I realized that we are all really lucky. We are in a significant time where there's a lot of bad in the world but we are here to bring all the good. Uh, we are in a time where we as the media, because that's where I work, uh, we share all kinds of news. And it's so relevant because behind Rabbi, it says the words, be kind. And one of the ways that we can be kind is to support and to tell people stories and to st stay motivated, but most importantly, uh, to use what we have, our talents, and to use it for good. Titi, I cannot believe that I'm sitting here right next to you virtually. Okay, uh, so shall yeah. we? <laughs> I am super excited to be here and yeah, to share my story. I've seen so many interviews about you and I must say that half of the things we want to know about you, we can, we can just Google, right? So we can just find <laughs> it online. Or you can but, ask me. <laughs> oh, I can ask you. So I, I don't really want to focus on, on some of the things that we can find online, but I want to really get down to growing up in Ethiopia, no one really touches on the little girl that walked around without shoes. All I know about you is that you grew up in a village. Tell me about life growing up in Ethiopia. Well, I grew up uh, far away uh, from uh, civilization and I had an amazing uh, and simple life. My whole family, my grandparents, we used to live in Gondor. Gondor today in Ethiopia, it's the second biggest city. And back then it was like small village and we lived as a small tribe, uh, far away from everything. Uh, I used to wake up in the morning and no shoes. I remember <laughs> I had only two dresses and going to the, you know, to the cows, to the sheep. And we didn't have no TV, no radio. I didn't know like until I was kind of six, I didn't know what it's TV or phone. Uh, so I lived a really great life. I, I was running in the jungle. It was like, I was going out in the morning, coming back in the night. Uh, I had really amazing childhood. Now, if you just joined in and I see that there are a few more eyes, Yakish, Titi, uh, I know we are chatting to a very famous, glamorous celebrity all the way from Israel. And we're excited to hear her story. And I love how you shake your head when I say that because, you know, the one thing that shines from you is, is kindness and humility and how humble you are. Even though, I mean, the last video I saw of you today was you getting ready for a photo shoot for like fashion TV or something crazy and beautiful dresses and they're doing your hair. And, and that's what every little girl wishes for. But you know, like most of us, when we travel abroad, whether it is for the first time, or like in my case, you know, I ended up in Israel because I wanted to attend Yeshiva. I had this passion for Jewish studies and to find out what Yerushalayim is all about. But your journey to Israel was not glamorous at all. You ended up in Israel because there was a loss. Your parents died. Yeah, my family, uh, most of my family, they come to Israel in the early 90s. Uh, because I remember since I was born, my grandfather said, we are Jewish and our dream is to move to Jerusalem and live in Jerusalem. Uh, so all of my family started doing Aliyah, started to come to Israel. And me and uh, my brother, I have one older brother, and my mom and my dad, we was uh, preparing ourselves also to come after my family and my grandparents to Israel. But my dad, he died when I was two. And um, 
we, after my dad passed away, me and my mother, we moved to the big city, to Addis Ababa. And when I was nine, um, my mother, she also died. And after, like one year after, we, we moved. Because she died, we, we moved. My grandparents said that we need to bring them home as soon as, as we can. And yeah, we, we moved to, to live with my grandparents in Natania. Um, but yeah, like um, we was hoping to move with my mom and she didn't make it. Long life and I'm sorry you lost your folks, but I can't help but thinking at this point, and I mean, someone like Rabbi Macenta, who I look up to, he believes that the curses, the things that in life lockdown, the things that we don't understand at the moment is the one thing that becomes the one thing that I can say it is, a, is an actual blessing in your life. If you didn't move to Israel, you wouldn't have this foundation or inspire young women. And I'm just going to say it to you. You wouldn't be in the position to inspire so many black women around the world. And I'm one of them that can look up to you, even though I'm a lot a lot older than you, Titi. It's, it's a fact, okay? <laughs> I, could, <laughs> really? I could never be Miss Israel, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so I want to I wanna get to that. I mean, how does a, how does a young little girl from, from Ethiopia who, and you just admitted it, who lives in a village without shoes, arrive in Israel, which was probably really scary at the time because you didn't even know what a city looked like, to the point where you are right now where... You have, a, you have a really crazy, cool life surrounded by so much good and you inspire so many people. How did you, what, what in you made you want to be successful? I think uh, one of my biggest role model in my life, it's, it was my mom. She was a super strong and independent woman. She, she, she teach me, even I was, even I was like with her only until nine years, but her spirits live in me and she was so strong and she always taught me to be smart, to work hard, to me and my brother. And even I lost her, I want to make sure uh, that I move to Israel and I will do my best to live my life. First, because she didn't make it. Second, this is what she taught me. Uh, and I think, you know, there is a God take from you something and he give you something back. Yeah. And I can't believe, like, even when, when I'm thinking about it, just to move to a new country, I remember when I come to Israel, I was in shock, you know, mm -hmm. my first time that I sit in the class with different people and doing ba back in days when I was younger, we didn't thought there is white Jew. I thought like mm -hmm. all the Jewish that I know are black. Mm -hmm. And then I come to Israel and I was like minority in Israel. And yeah, a lot of things like change in my life, but I was focused, I don't know, I was focused to, to do really good in, in the school. And I remember coming the first day of the school, I did it on one word in Hebrew. I was so scared and, and shocked. And my teacher, she said to the class, this is Titi, she just moved to Israel. And all of you, you're gonna help her to, to learn the language. Mm -hmm. uh, and the girls were supportive of me. They were trying to teach me the Hebrew. But I know if I want to succeed and I want to be part of uh, you know, the class and part of the, the Israeli team, and I, if I want to be like, successful in Israel, I need just to, to study as fast, as fast as I can the language and to fit in. So I used to finish the day school and teach myself like another four hours every day Hebrew. And I had, you know, I, I believe uh, God and my mom just helped me, you know. I was always focused to do the best as I can. And even it was hard, you know, it was super hard. And when I'm talking about my life, it sounds like, you know, very glamoury. But doing, you know, doing that time, I, I had a lot of struggles with just being a new, new immigrant in Israel and, and, and being without my parents and, and you know, being in the class that I don't, I can't talk with anybody because I don't know the language. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a lot of struggles, but I always, you know, focused and, and like my focus was first to be a good student and have great grades. And I, I, I do it like, you know, slowly, slowly. But yeah, I, I guess I, I had, you know, help from God. 
I love what you're saying and there's there's so much we can take out. I have to welcome everyone that has just joined in. If you've just stepped up and you've joined this amazing conversation in this beautiful space, uh, I'm speaking to a glamorous, yes she is, celebrity, uh, Miss Israel. Um, she has a foundation. She is known as a model. I want to talk about life now because I know that you're on campus as well. Um, but Yiki is Titi uh, now. She's joining us today to to talk about adversity. You know what? We, we are all in lockdown and we feel like this is the worst thing that has ever happened to us. And when, when, when you said an immigrant, I realized that you were in your own lockdown during that time. And we are not alone in this time that we are going through because we can learn so much from your story. The other thing that you've just mentioned is the fact that uh, when you go through change and you want to create change, you're going to have to work hard. You're going to have to believe, but also one doesn't create joy or change just all by yourself. You know, you're going to have to get a band of people just like you do, did with, with all the girls in your class to teach you Hebrew so that you could just communicate or even in this case today, pray, you know, yeah, so yeah. Where, where was your brother at the time? Because I know he moved with you. Yeah, he moved with me. My brother was here with me all the time, all the way. We go to the same school. He was the reason that I didn't do a lot of, you know, nosy things in the school because he was like finished. I was finishing the day at school and he used to come to my teacher and to ask them like, how was my behavior? And my, my, my brother, he's, my biggest inspiration is so smart and he was there for me and I was, you know, he's, he's there. Yeah. He was mm -hmm. all the way. And uh, thank God he's, he had uh, medical issues and now he's okay. So we are back on the track, but he's here. Yeah. He's like much more like shy for me and okay. like Joker and everything. <laughs> Very different. Titi, yeah. one of the things you mentioned is, is that it wasn't all glamorous, even though there's beautiful videos of you online. Uh, I laughed because probably the third most Google thing about you is how tall is Titi? Okay. Really? <laughs> so it's like, yes, because people actually want to know that, right? So that's important for young women, I guess, that wants to become a model or I don't know, perhaps, you know, that you're from Ethiopia Googling uh, Titi and want to move to Israel too. I don't know. But what was the biggest thing that you, that was, that was preventing you from being successful in life if there was ever such a thing like what do you think was the biggest blockage or thing in your way the same way even now that we feel oh, i can't reach my full potential or perhaps you're a small business owner in south africa and you're thinking but how do i get out of this lockdown you know that's that's almost suffocating was there anything in your life that ever felt so strong or suffocating that you thought that you can't progress or become better I think, you know, just being an immigrant in Israel and being, you know, all the Ethiopians here, when we moved from Ethiopia to Israel, we had a lot of struggles as an immigrant because we come from the villages. We come with no education and we become, uh, you know, our parents, they don't know the language, they don't know anything, you know, and we become the people that leading the home and helping our parents. And for me, it's just being with my grandparents in the house and, and you know, and I am the one that take him to the bank, that take him to the hospitals and everything that they need. Uh, so I had much more pressure than a regular uh, kid in Israel. Yeah. Uh, just being a, an immigrant, it's, it's, it's hard, you know? And um, I think every struggle that I had I never stop and say, oh, this is a huge struggle for me. I can't deal with that. I try to be a positive no matter where I'm going, no matter what was the situation. And also, I always uh, surrounding myself with, with good people, you know, that inspires me. And like the, the book that I read the, when I was like in high school was like about, you know, uh, Barack Obama and Oprah Winfrey, the people, you know, that I want to be like them. I want to be successful, even my background, it's, it's not the same like the, the others, you know? And I know it, but I didn't want anything to stop me. And I was, you know, working hard, more than everybody in my class, more than every group that I meet in my life. So I believe it's 
you know, the fact that I was immigrant and, and the fact that I was black because pe people that didn't get, like, even to today's rallies, they know there is Ethiopian Jewish, but still it was new for them. And it's also like issue that you need to deal with. Uh, it's not like why it says bad things, you know, but it's still, it, there is like, you know, it's, it, there is different between us. Uh, today it's not, but not 100%, but to be an immigrant and also to be like black, like mm -hmm. all the Jewish here are white. For me, you know, there is Ashkenazi Sephardic between the, the white, but like still it was, I will not say it was something that, you know, stopped me being who I am, but it was struggling, you know, mm -hmm. that's something that I, I need to deal with. Um, I get, I answered to you or because my- You definitely is... answered it for me. Because <laughs> here's, here's the obvious thing, right? And I mean, I'm conducting the interview and in a while we're going to do some Q&A. So please, you're welcome to, to ask some questions to Titi. If you've just joined us, uh, we're speaking to a philanthropist. She is an inspiration to many. Uh, she was Miss Israel in 2013 and Titi is joining us tonight and I'm just so excited to meet her. The thing is, being a woman and trying to make a difference is hard already. Being black and Jewish is also really hard. Being Ethiopian, black and Jewish in Israel, the time that you arrived there was even harder, you know? So yeah. here in 2013, you decide, okay, I'm gonna enter Ms. Israel. A, a part of me wants to say, what were you thinking, okay? But the yeah. other side goes, like, thank God you, you, you entered. I am, I'm so glad, glad you won, you know? Tell me about that journey. Like, first of all, who motivated you to enter? So, and, also, yeah. and also, when you won, when you won, I want to know, what, what was your thinking? Why do you think they chose you? Well, uh, you said that being black, being like Ethiopian Jewish in Israel, it's hard. Can you imagine being black, being a woman, being Ethiopian Jew, and being in the unit, only boys, you know, in, in the army? It was much more harder than everything. I was a commander in the army for 300 soldiers. I was the only female one in my platoon. So it's much more harder. But the thing about Miss Israel, it was, I never, I was tall, yes, but I never thought that I am beautiful. I would go to modeling. I was busy with studying and I was, you know, busy with other stuff. So my best friend, no, the first person that, uh, introduced me, like, she was like the, my first best friend when I just came to Israel and the first person that invited me to sit near to her in the class. And the first word that she told me back then in 2004 was, you're so beautiful, I'm going to send you one day to Mrs. Ray Beauty Context, you're going to win, and I'm going to take the prize, the car. So, <laughs> she, so she told me that all these years, but... I never thought that I wasn't gonna do it because I finished the school and then I joined the army for three years and a half. And then one day I just got a message in my phone and they said that I have been uh, invited to the Miss Israel Beauty Con to the auditions. And I'm like, what? What's going on? <laughs> so I know it was her immediately. I called her and I, told, and I asked her like, what you've done? And she said, I sent you, this is your last year. You have to go because there is limit of age, you know? Right. She said, next year you're gonna be 22, you're gonna be old for this, this is your <laughs> time. So I said, okay, you know, i am finished the army, I'm, I'm, I just signed to the university, I have four months between. It's for the sport, it's gonna be new, you know, something new that I will try. Uh, so I enter, and the first day of the audition, it was crazy because all the girls, like it was 2,000 girls, 2,000 girls, beautiful, tall, and I'm like 5'11", and I, I never walk with heels because I was too tall. In the school, I was the tallest. So <laughs> I was like the weirdo one, you know? And, uh, <laughs> and I, I remember going to the audition the first day. I come with flip-flop shoes, with my big brother t-shirts, and all the girls, they're like, Perfect, hair done, makeup. I didn't know how to put in a lipstick. <laughs> I was not from that world. And, uh, and I started audition and I, I didn't thought they're gonna choose me, you know, cause like I was different. But I think uh, with that, they thought I was, you know, the only black in the finals. 
and uh, there's a lot of pretty girls in Israel, Ethiopian girls, but like we have a problem with the toes, you know, with the height. So <laughs> they are beautiful. And I was like, I was the only one that left in that competition. It was 10 black girls and then I was to the final. And I think they chose me because, because, you know, I, I can't, I can't say there is, I am the most beautiful girl in the world. There is no such a thing, you know, because I believe that every one of us, we are beautiful in the same way and beauty come with different colors and sizes. So I believe I won because my personality, because, you know, the way, uh, you know, I had agendas, the way, the things that I did during the competition, it was not just a competition for me. I take it for the next level and I try, you know, to, to make a better, you know, a role model to the people and to help my community during the competition. Uh, I think I won because I had an agenda and different, you know, because all of them was beautiful, I swear. Like yeah. 20, the 25 finals was, each one of them can be Miss Israel. But in the end, just being beautiful is not enough. Wow. Being beautiful is not enough. Well, you just heard it. You are live with us and Titi, we are so excited. Titi, a now an Israeli model. Uh, we've heard it. Black and Jewish from Ethiopia, <laughs> living it up in Israel, okay? And tonight we have the privilege to hear from you. Soon we'll take some questions from you and Titi will be answering them. Uh, but I still have a few minutes left and I, I have a hundred thousand things to ask you, okay? Because I'm just so excited. You mentioned one thing now that got me excited, okay? It's what I live for, it's the things that I've learned. Um, I, I had the opportunity to speak to Rabbi Masinta in the week and I said to him, after so many years, what is the most important thing to you? And he believes in community and giving back and helping other people. And you know what, even during this time in lockdown, South, South Africa is having a tough time. It's an interesting time for businesses. People have lost money, uh, they've lost hope, they are anxious, unexcited. Uh, others are making money. And, and you said one thing, you said you, you entered the competition because you knew you could help your community. And mm -hmm. I, I wanna talk to that, I wanna, I wanna ask you, what are you doing at the moment? And also, how are you helping people through uh, the TT Foundation? Um, let, let's answer that first, because I have another question to that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so for me, um, since I won, I just say, okay, I have a great stage to do to make a difference, you know? Mm -hmm. So the first thing that I said to my managers is that I want to go back to my neighborhood in Natania, where I live. Uh, it's tough neighborhood. I want to um, make a program for the kids uh, because the kids there, they finish the day school and they have between the day school until they go sleep, they have free time and they don't know what to do. And sometimes they do bad things uh, because their parents, they don't have the money to pay, you know, to the extra activities. Uh, so the first thing that I want, it was to help to the kids in my neighborhood and just to educate more because if you ask me uh, to break bridges and to be equal to someone, uh, it's, it's just to learn, you know, just to be smart and, 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 and be a lawyer, be a doctor, be everything that you can be. Uh, because not, not, nobody can, uh, can argue with you when you come with your you know, degree in this certificate. So I want to invest uh, in the education of this kid. So I come out with Project TT and it's working for, for five years now. And I have uh, 65 kids in the project. And yeah, I give extra activities of math, English, uh, basketball, jewelry, makeup to the girls. And it's my own because I, every year I raise money and I fly and, and come back. And also I do a lot of lectures here in the jail to the, to the you know, to the people that locked out, locked, locked in, you say, right? Yeah. Uh, to, the, to the kids. It's not even people. They are kids mm -hmm. and they are teenagers. And I try to give them, you know, a little bit of uh, hope and, and, and positive uh, vibes. And, you know, because I should be one of them also. So you just need to dream and, 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 and work hard. And this is what I'm trying to say. I don't know if I say it good in English, but in Hebrew it sounds better. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm doing my best and, uh, and also my community here, all of them like, you know, important to me, but my community here, 
it's my first priority and I'll try to help in every way that I can, you know, politics and everything. Well, first of all, you're expressing yourself beautifully in English and for a girl that learns Hebrew in three months, okay, you're doing just great. I'm, I'm inspired by, and I mean, I can't help but look to our title of this discussion. Um, it started out where we said this is how to triumph over adversity and you were a key example. You, you are the triumph, you know, you've done so much and you have journeyed so much and you teach other people. What's the one thing that you would want back? Because you know, as people who are in media, and I'm in media and I'm on the radio, people always want from us, right? So uh, you miss Israel, surely people think you have bags of money and you know that you can just come to Ethiopia and save all of us. And, and what's the one thing that you would want back? If there's, if there's anything that you could want back as Titi, what would it be? My privacy. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, yeah. It's that I'm like all over, and and people know me because I do hear like a lot of uh, things in, on the TV. And the I love my job, and I love the way that I have, you know, the the, possi the possibility to help others and to help myself. And I work hard, and but it's it's you you pay something back and my privacy it's yeah <laughs> i think this is the only thing that I, I i want back but i'm okay with that also you know because it's part of it i can mm -hmm. but sometimes it can be too much you know but mm -hmm. without that nothing i'm you know i'm happy where i am i think i answer right yeah you did the, the other thing that you said is is hope and and I want to say this before we go to your questions and answers. If you have any questions, you're welcome to post them to TT because we still have some of a valuable time. You mentioned the word hope. And I read a piece the other day that talks about the aggression of hope. Like, let's say you want to sell your house, right? You hope that someone will buy it. That's quite a big transition, right? From like having a house that's not going to sell to someone that walks away with your house. So I'm, I'm excited that you use the word hope, that if we want to achieve or be somewhere in life or even help our communities, we need to have hope because it's, it's, a, it's an, a very aggressive form of believing. It will change something from, from zero to hero or from, yeah. from being bad to being really good. And you are hope, you are. You, you are hope for Ethiopia. I saw, I saw a picture of you wearing, um, that you said Ethiopia made me, you know? So ah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, are, you are hope for Ethiopia, you know? And, and you hope for Israel. And you're not just hope for black women, you, you hope for all women. And yes. you hope for all young women. And, and you hope it's for- It's kind words, really. I mean it. And, and we need more stories like yours that we can talk about so that we know that kindness and giving and supporting other people will change the world for good always. So Titi, thanks for using your talent to help other people. You mm -hmm. had to, you had to have, you had to have the curse of wearing no shoes, coming to Israel, winning, going, going through the army. By the way, I want to ask you a question about that. So you were in the army for three and a half years. Yeah. I, I yeah. Tell me about, yeah, yeah. I, girls here need to like we all need to go to the army. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I basically I supposed to serve like two years, but I decide to to do it. You know, everything that I do in my life, I do it the best ways I can. Like <laughs> seriously, this is my my nature. I don't do everything good, but at least I now try for like I give one my one hundred percent. And I said like now I'm already here for two years. And I want to be a leader. So I go to the commander class course. And then I was an officer in the army. And when I come back from the officer schools, my platoon was mixed boys and girls. And then when I come back, they say, we split the platoons because we want to give to the boys different job. But you have good grades from the officer schools. If you want to be uh, officers of boys, you can choose. And I'm like, really? <laughs> of course I want to be officer of boys, yeah. you know, it's much more fun to what to say what to do to boys than girls, you know. So I was the only woman in my platoon and then the only black one in my platoon. It was it was hard because in the beginning, like I always say like 
the army, uh, there is no racism in the army or discrimination in the army. We are all green. If you are good, they give you, you know, what, what you deserve. And I remember, you know, in the beginning, it was hard for me as a woman just to come and, you know, be outside, not taking showers for two weeks. And just, you know, when, when they see me, they're like, oh, well, we have a girl lieutenant and why well, we have a girl first lieutenant. And since they know me much more closely, like, I, I never smiled. I was super like tough, and they always like thought I'm like the craziest. But uh, I had crazy, crazy time, and I had a great experience because you know I was 20 and then and, and 21, and I was in charge of 300 soldiers, and, and it teach me a lot, you know, yeah. and and it teach you to be responsible for others and to care others to others. You know, there was like everything to me. There was we was like, I was much older than them only in two years, but you know, the experience and what you have been touring in the army, uh, I, they was like my child and, and, and I take care of them, I teach them and everything. And so after the army, I feel like I can do everything, you know? Uh, but yeah, the army is the point in my life that really teach me a lot, you know? And, and I was struggling a lot during that time because as a woman, as a black woman also. And but still I was, you know, the army is the place that teach me everything that I know, like my confidence, you know? Yeah, it's make me a strong woman. Titi, this is amazing. We're gonna go to your Q and A's. It's uh, 5.32 already. And thank you for joining us on Facebook as well. Uh, you asked some questions. So uh, Myrna wants to know, no question, just to say thank you for the opportunity to see and hear and learn about this humble and delightfully authentic and beautiful young woman. Oh, thank Isn't you. Isn't that thank nice? You. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> you guys make me blush. <laughs> It's beautiful. She's, she's, she's right. There's another one from D. D. Tennis says, how old was Titi when she went to Israel? And how old is she now? Now I am 28, soon to be 29. When's uh, your birthday? 23 to June. Okay, we'll sing then. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was 12 when I moved to Israel wow. uh, in 2004. Yeah. So I knew everything. I remember Ethiopia, and I also come back to Ethiopia after I won the crown. Uh, we back to Ethiopia, and we we film everything when I born when I was born. The house that I living in, and it was crazy. Yeah, it was crazy just to come back there and and see it with the different eyes. You know, like yeah. when I was there, everything was looking big, and then I come back, and I was looking like so small, and like the place that I was like playing and and but i feel so happy there you know i i had really joy and i was happy kid even the things that you know i have been through but still mm -hmm. i had really great you know childhood and it's something that i i i love that you know that god give me this way because now i have the opportunity to say that i growing up in the village without nothing and I live my life the way I live right now. And it's like, sometimes I'm feeling like it's two different people, you know, it's two different lives. So I'm happy that was, this is my life, you know? So a question just came through that I wanted to ask. And um, Mariam wants to know, have you been back to Ethiopia? So you answered it in some way, but yeah. I want to know, do you, do you go back often and do you still have family there? So uh, I did uh, did go back twice. Once after I finished my my army service, I go there alone because my mother' grave is there. So yeah. I go to visit. It was something that I never deal with that. So I feel that I need to to deal with that, and I feel like strong enough to go there. So my first trip to Ethiopia was alone. I didn't tell anybody. I just took my bag, and I know the language and everything, and I had my family there. Uh, my cousin, he was uh, waiting to also to come to Israel. And after I won, they want me to go back and make a documentary movie about my life. And then I say, if you want me to go back there, I have an uncle with kids and wife, and they didn't let him to come here. And he was waiting for 14 years. And I said, if you want me to go there, he will come back with me in the plane. And wow. Yeah. So he was waiting for... 14 years 
and we met it through the TV in four days. We, I was there four days, and he came back with me to Israel. With his he came family. back with you to Israel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, I said, like, this is, I have one condition. If you want me to do it, I'm, I'm just going to do it if I know that they will come with me to Israel, all the family. Okay. And the crazy things about that, that they are here years now, seven years, and they have, like, three girls in the army, and <laughs> one of them, like, the, the older one, he's, like, going to the university, he's going to be uh, a, a, a nurse, not nurse, like, how do yeah. you say a doctor or a nurse in medical. Yeah, in medical. yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. they are like, yeah. So it's something that's, you know, it's good to be famous only for this. <laughs> but that's the thing though, right? So our title of today is Triumph Through Adversity. If you didn't go through that struggle and we don't wish that for you, but look at your life. It's incredible, right? And you could do that for your family. I think that's a great story. No wonder they want to make movies about you, Titi, because that's a story. But it's like in our own lives, we can relate to some of that, not to that scale. But, you know, we also have someone that we need to save or help or yeah. someone that we're really close to. I, I think you have so much to tell. Danella sent one. She says, I'm in Israel listening. Um, you are really awesome. Uh, I want to wish you much muzzle, and that's from Daniela. So she's listening from Israel at the moment. So hi, Daniela. Oh, as well. hi, Daniela. This is yeah, so crazy. Um, yeah. gonna, oh, there's a few more questions. There's anonymous, amazing person, very inspirational. Um, okay, here's another one. Uh, how were you able to fund the pageant, and who coached you? Who coached you to walk with a book on your head? I don't know. What do they do in pageants? Yeah, they do a lot of stuff. <laughs> uh, for me, it was like learning everything from zero because I didn't have the background of the girls, the other girls that was modeling before and everything. So I take like course to walk in the catwalking. So I have a teacher for it. And I had like a teacher teach me like doing makeup and, and, and everything. I didn't know what to do. And uh, like we don't do pageant like, in the US, it's not like that. It's, you don't do pageant from like, you are 12 years old. You just come to the competition and, and you do, if you succeed in one shot, it's one shot. There is no like, you, you can't even compete again. You can't come like next week, next year or something like that. So we don't do that much pageant. We have just one pageant and you come and you try it for four months and this is it. But um, who inter me, it's my best friend. She's, she, she intermitted a competition. I didn't know, uh, but uh, apparently she changed my life. And, and I think, yeah. you know, as I, I always say that we need to surround ourselves with good people, with people that, you know, take you to the next level and not take mm -hmm. you down. So uh, good friends are, can change your life, you know? So she changed my life, she did that, yeah. Well, good friends can change your life, Titi. This has been incredible so far. Hazel just commented by saying you are so inspirational and I want to agree with her. Uh, I want to take the, the focus to where you are right now. Tell us about an ordinary day, which will obviously be extraordinary in your case. What are you doing at the moment? And then also I want to know if you are still modeling because you are beautiful and I want to know because that is your talent too. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm still uh, modeling. In this day, like the last two months, like everyone, because the coronavirus, we didn't do anything. Wow. Uh, and it's like crazy, crazy times in the world. And this is the time to really, you know, be positive and to know mm -hmm. that we, it's going to be past. And, you know, mm -hmm. and I believe that everybody's going through that. We are on this together. So it's hard to everyone, but... I think this is the time to be positive and to help to each other and, you know, to help to do our neighbors and to see if they need something, and, you know, to the olders. And, and, and this is the time to be together in the world. And this is the time to spread the love and, and, and hope and, you know, just to pray to God uh, that this is going to be passed soon. And, and I, I'm happy also to say that in Israel, we already start to back to normal. Mm -hmm. And I wish you this, guys, in South Africa to, to, to be back to normal as, as fast as we can, as you can. And, um, and these days now I'm doing a, a TV show I have that's coming, uh, uh, I think, in two months. And I'm still doing modeling. And I'm studying. I'm studying government uh, in the IDC. 
Um, I hope I, I think I will be in the politics when I be when I will be older. So I'm starting, uh, you know, to study from now. And um, I do I do lectures all over the world, all over the U.S. And, uh, <laughs> I <yeah. saw> that. <laughs> and talking on behalf of Israel and. Um, yeah, I do. I, I'm writing now uh, a movie. I'm thinking about writing a movie about my life uh, with people from LA. I have a, I have a lot of things to do. Thank God. Uh, yeah, this is what I'm doing. I'm doing everything. If you could write a book about your life, or even give us a sneak peek of the title of the movie, what would the title of either the book or this movie be? What would you call it? Maybe it's too long. The village girl that become a cover girl. Wow. Okay. okay. <laughs> Maybe it's too long for a movie, but for a wow. book, it's okay. <laughs> that is crazy. You thought about that, right? <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> well, listen, you are the cover girl. You're more than that. You're an inspiration and you are you are the triumph of adversity and that's what we wanted to talk about today i really hope that you feel inspired through this talk i hope you feel inspired through tt and the things that she can, she just showed us that we can overcome anything and here's the thing and i conclude by saying that it's wonderful to see that your godly talent is something that you are using for good and it's wonderful to see that we can all learn from you knowing that if we have a curse in our life that it can become a blessing and that we can use it for good, that we can become something incredible. Titi, thanks for your time. Thank you. You are so amazing. Like, really, you inspire me. <laughs> like, thank you so much. I, I am. I want to come back. I am. It's my first trip, I think. It's going to be no. to, to, to South Just Africa. I need to come back to the Medikwe Hills. I think this is the end to the, to the safari. Yes. Yeah. I have to come back there. Yeah. So, oh, well, uh, Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no problems, Aaron. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, I have to, I have to <laughs> say, two incredible individuals we heard from today. Titi, and thank you. You are so pretty, Elena. <laughs> oh, you are too. Toda, have a Seriously. Titi, thank you. Your story is truly inspiring. Uh, during this unprecedented time that we're all going through, as coronavirus has hit every country in the world, it's stories like yours that has given us all strength and uh, courage to look at the opportunities in life. So thank you. And thank uh, you. I, I, I think that I, I, truly in, I truly enjoyed it. I'm sure everyone else did as well. So thank I you. I enjoyed it, like really. And, and Ilana, nice. yeah. thank you for agreeing to join us as a panelist and making a, a, this an absolutely remarkable uh, webinar. So thank you very much as well. And to everyone joining in, thank you guys for joining in. Everyone, have a good evening, and thank you. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Bye, Titi. -bye. Bye, Lena. Bye, thank you. <laughs>